Let's lift up our hands to Jesus. <clears throat> Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank and I praise you for this time. I thank you for your word. I thank you for go forth with power under the anointing in Jesus' name. I thank and I praise you. My speech, my teaching, my preaching is not an enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Their faith does not rest in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. I thank you for that revelation knowledge that you over the eyes of understanding in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we just love you. We just love you. We just love you. And we just appreciate you so much. Father, we just love you. We just love you. We just love you. Lord Jesus, we just love you. We just love you. We just love you. Oh, hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. And Father, I thank and I praise you that the word will be in their hearts, that you will touch their heart even as the word goes forth in Jesus' name. And Satan, I remind you, power is broken in this place in the name of Jesus. Every foul, wicked, and unclean spirit, every hindering spirit, I bind you, I break power, I command you, go from this place in Jesus' name. Loose that anointing to break that yoke in Jesus' name and lose the love, joy, and the peace of the Lord in Jesus' name. And Jesus will give you praise, honor, and glory. And all the people say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Like I said, you know, sometimes you have just so much love for him that you, you can't express it. You understand what I'm saying? So it comes out of your eyes. <laughs> yes. And then on top of that, of course, he pours his love upon you. Praise God. All right, let's start. We're looking at uh, holiness, amen? We're looking actually at the, uh, the servant's heart. And what we have seen so far is talking about the attitude. And uh, we're looking at holiness right now, okay? And it's not uh, what you wear or anything like that. And we also looked at the fact that holiness is also translated sanctification, <clears throat> made holy, <clears throat> excuse me, okay, and uh, thank you, Jesus. Let's, you know, you set apart to God, amen? Let's go on. There are two phases of sanctification. Number one, when you're born again, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. In verse 2. It says, Unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, both theirs and ours, okay? It says they're sanctified, made holy in Christ Jesus, okay? And that's why they were called saints. You're called saints because you have been made holy, amen? You're not holy? I better come here. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We've been declared what? Righteous, amen, and made holy through our Lord Jesus Christ. John 17. So like I said, there are two phases. John 17, 17. And Jesus says here, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Okay? As you have sent me into the world, even so have I sent them into the world. Verse 19. And for their sake, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. 
made holy. Amen? So the moment you were born again, you, become, you became as pure and holy as the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Amen? Amen? It's not anything that we could do or anything we have done, but it's because of Jesus, by simply receiving him. We became one spirit with him. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Okay, let's go on. And the second one is progressive sanctification. Okay, so gradually. And how does that work? Let's go to First Thessalonians chapter 4. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter 4. It says in verse 1, Furthermore then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you, exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as you have received of us how you ought to walk and to please God, underline that, how you ought to walk and to please God, so you would abound more and more. Okay? And it says in verse 2, For you know that what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. Verse 3, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should, abs should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, okay? Because we have received the Lord Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we have been made holy, okay? That's our spirit, man. But now we have to do something about the body, Okay, and the soulless area, the flesh and the soulless area. <clears throat> okay, and it's very important because we have to control our mind. We have to control our body. Amen. We have to manage it. And we can. Otherwise, God would not give, give us the word of God to show us how. Amen. <clears throat> Let's go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. And let's start with verse 22. Now I'm reading from the Amplified, okay? And it says in the Amplified... Strip yourselves of your former nature, okay? And the King James is it that you put off concerning the former nature, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, okay? So the Amplified says, strip yourselves. Now, who is supposed to do that? We are, amen? God's not going to do it. He's given us the word. And showing us how to do it. So strip yourselves of your former nature, put off and disregard and discard your old renewed self. Okay? Or your, sorry, your old unrenewed self, which characterized your previous man, your previous manner of life, and becomes corrupt through lust and the desires that spring forth from this uh, delusion. Okay? <coughs> And then, in verse 23 in the King James, it says, And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen? Be renewed. And the uh, Amplified says, And be constantly, be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. Okay? And then it says in in the King James in 24, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Okay? And the uh, Amplified says, <clears throat> and put on the new nature, the regenerate self created in God's image. Okay? 
in true righteousness and holiness. Amen. Now, we are to do these things, aren't we? Okay. And we do that through the word of God. Otherwise, how are you going to do it? Hello. But God already shows us in the word of God how to do it. Amen. All right. Let's go on. <clears throat> Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. No, let's go on first. That was verse 24. And it says here in verse 25, let's go on to, with Ephesians 4. In verse 25, wherefore putting away lying, don't lie. <laughs> of course, none of you do. Amen. Speak every man truth with his neighbor. For we are members one of another. Be angry and sin not. Amen. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Okay, don't stay angry and go to bed and angry. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. Neither give place to the devil. Because when you do that, you give place to the devil. Okay, because if you stay angry, there's unforgiveness. Hello? Okay, that's why it says, be angry and sin not. You can be angry, but don't sin. Amen. Okay? Don't let it go on and you wake up in the morning and you're still angry. Mm, no. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Okay? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Let's go on. <clears throat> it says in verse 28, Let him that st stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good that he may have to give to him that needs. Verse 29, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and keep the door of my lips. Amen? Amen. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Okay? And it says here, in verse 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Amen? Amen? We can easily grieve the Holy Spirit. Disobedience is one of them. Okay? Um, sowing discord among brethren. Yeah. Hello. Don't do that. Amen? Yeah. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. We have to get rid of all that. You don't hold on to that. I don't care what happened in the past. Okay? I don't care what people have done to you in the past or how they talk bad about you or look down upon you in the past. Let it go. I always say, you don't have a past. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Go to Philippians chapter 3. That's why it's very important we, that we apply the word of God. Philippians chapter 3. And we're going to look at verse 13. And Paul says, He brethren... I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. Now, the things that he has gone through, the things that people have done to him, here you see he's able to say, forgetting the things that are behind. Amen? Amen? And that's what we have to do. It doesn't matter what has happened to us in the past. Forget the things that, that are behind. Amen. Reach forth, it says, unto those things which are before. And then he says in verse 14, I press toward the mark of the price for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? So forget what happened back then. Okay? That's the past. Like I always say, you don't have a past. You will have a past when you look back. Okay? Because the devil will bring everything back to you. You understand what I'm saying? Everything that has happened in the past, the devil will bring it back to you. Okay? That's when you dwell in the past. But when the thought comes about that, okay, 
You reject it. Amen? It doesn't matter how you felt back then. No matter how you feel. Okay? Um, you have to reject it. I used to feel very inferior. Okay? Until I got in the Word of God. You understand? That's when I found out I am not inferior to anyone. Why? I got the Holy Ghost. God lives on the inside of me. So how can I be inferior? Amen? So when that the thought and the feeling of inferiority and insecurity comes rejected in Jesus' name. It doesn't belong to us. Amen? It's a trick from the devil to stop us from doing what God wants us to do. Are you with me? Amen? And that's exactly what he wants to do. Okay? So don't, uh, don't look back. Let's go to Ephesians 4 again. Let's finish that. And it talks about evil speaking. Don't talk bad about people. Amen. Don't talk bad about leadership. Amen. Amen? Don't talk bad. If you can't say anything good, just keep your yap shut. <laughs> Amen. And verse 32. And be a kind one to another. Be kind. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Hello. Even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Who are we not to forgive? When we come to God every time for the same stupid thing, saying, God, please forgive me. Hello. Amen. So we're to forgive. You forgive by faith. You don't forgive by feeling. Because when you see the person, you... <laughs> Amen. So you forgive by faith. Okay. All right, let's go on. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. First Corinthians chapter nine. In verse twenty seven. <clears throat> but I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others myself should be a castaway. We have to what? Put under the flesh. Okay? Put it under. Not just the flesh, but it's the soulless area also. We have to put it under. We have to control it. Amen? And it's very important that we do. That's right. We just looked at unforgiveness and anger. Put under that flesh. Amen? Yes? Hi, Cynthia. <laughs> Okay, let's go on. First uh, John, chapter two. First John, chapter two. We're going to look at verse fifteen. Verse fourteen first. I'm going to read out of the Amplified again. Okay, verse 14. It says, I write to you, fathers, because you have come to know, recognize, be conscious of, and understand him who has existed from the beginning. I write to you, young man, because you are strong and vigorous, and the word of God is always abiding in you in your hearts, and you have been victorious over the wick wicked one. Verse 15, do not love or cherish the world or the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in him. Do you see that? Okay, let's go on. Verse 16, for all that's in the, excuse me, 
for all that's in the world, the lust of the flesh, craving for sensual grat uh, gratification, the lust of the eyes, greedy longings of the mind, and the pride of life, assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things, okay? These do not come from the Father, but from the world itself. Verse 17, and the world passes away and disappears, and with it, the forbidden cravings, the passionate desires, the lust of it. But he who does the will of God and his life, in his life, abides, remains forever. Amen? Amen. Is that clear? Yes. Okay, I'm glad it's clear. We're not of this world. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen? We have another one there. But even now, we can walk accordingly. All right, let's go on. Um, the progressive uh, sanctification, okay, comes through the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. The Word of God and the Holy Ghost. Okay, John 17. John 17. Even if I've read it before, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, verse 17, Jesus says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. That portion, the Amplified says, Sanctify them, purify, consecrate, separate, separate them for yourself. Make them holy by the truth. Your word is truth. Amen? Let's go on. Verse 18, Jesus said, As you have sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, and they also, that they also may be sanctified through the truth. Amen? So the progressive sanctification comes through the Word of God and the Holy Ghost. The Word of God and the Holy Ghost. Okay, that's why it's very important to know what the Word of God says. Go to the book of Galatians, chapter 5. Galatians, chapter 5. In verse 16, this I say then, Walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How do you walk in the Spirit? Walk according to God's word. Amen? Follow the leading of the Holy Spirit and do what the word of God says. Okay? It's very important that we do that. Walking in holiness is walking in obedience to God's word. Okay? Let's go to Romans chapter 12. Are you with me? Yeah. Romans chapter 12, starting with verse 9. I read out of the Amplified. Let your love be sincere, a real thing. There's no, you know, with us, it shouldn't be, I love you, I love you, I don't mean it. You understand? It has to come from the heart. Okay? Let you, if you, if there's someone that is, I have a hard time loving them, ask God to give you his love for them. Okay? When you do that, it will be much easier. And when the, then when you say, I love you, it will come from your heart. Okay? Because sometimes, 
we're still in this thing that's called the body, the flesh. Okay? And some people are not very lovable. Of course, all of you are, amen? Not too many amens on that. <laughs> but seriously, okay, there's some people that you have a hard time loving. And that's why you ask God for his love to pour out, out of you, to them. Okay? All right, let's go on. Let your love be sincere, a real thing. Hate what is evil. Amen. Loathe all ungodliness. Turn in horror from wickedness. But hold fast to that which is good. Verse 10. Love one another with brotherly affection as members of one family, given precedence and showing honor to one another. Amen? Amen. Verse 11. Never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor. Be aglow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. Verse 12. Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and, and patient in suffering and tribulation. Be constant in prayer. Verse 13. Contribute to the needs of God's people, sharing in the necessities of the saints. Pursue the practice of hospitality. <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> Verse 14. Bless those who persecute you, who are cruel in their attitude toward you. Now, Bless and do not curse. It doesn't mean that when they do something to you, that you, I will bless you in their face. I bless you. No, you don't do that. Amen? <laughs> you tell them, I'll bless you. No. But you don't have to do it in their face. Anyway, bless those who curse you, who are cruel in their attitude towards you. Bless and do not curse them. Amen? Verse 15, rejoice with those who rejoice, sharing others' joy, and weep with those who weep, sharing others' grief. Verse 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, snobbish, high-minded, exclusive. Amen? But readily adjust yourself to people to things and give yourself to humble tasks. Never overestimate yourself or be wise in your own conceit. I shouldn't be cleaning the floor. I should be right here in the pulpit preaching and teaching and ministering. Let somebody else clean the toilets. That's not for me. That's beyond me. Hello? Why is it quiet? <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Amen. Even my husband, in the beginning, he cleaned toilets. I mean, you know, he cleaned the floor. He cleaned things. Amen. Praise God. Man of God. Cleaning the toilets. Yes. <laughs> Verse 17, repay no evil for evil. Even today he does that at home. I'm speaking good over you. <laughs> he does. You know. Repay no evil for evil. But... Oh, okay. Repay no evil for evil. Okay. Verse 18. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Amen? Amen. Amen. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave the way open for God's wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. Feed him. Yes. If he's thirsty, give him drink. Yes. 
For doing so, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Now, don't do this, okay? You can't stand the person, so you're going to feed them, and you're going to, you know, do all that so that you can pour burning coals on them. <laughs> you don't do that. <laughs> you do it in love and let God put the burning coals on them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, verse 21. Do not let yourself be overcome by evil, but overcome or master evil with good. Amen? Praise God. All right, let's go on. Oh, thank you, Jesus. First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. It says in verse 12, let no man despise your youth, but be an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in love, conversation or behavior, in spirit, and in faith, in purity. We have to be examples. Amen? People will look at you. They will know. If, if you walk in the spirit, if you walk the best you know how, according to the word. People will know that. Okay? When I was still a trader, not traitor, trader. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay, when I was still a trader, um, after I got saved and all that, and I knew I was called in the ministry, and I got closer to where God was going to put me in the ministry, okay? My boss, see, I was a bond trader. She was the uh, stock trader. When it was time for me to quit, she told me I knew it because there has been such a change in you, she said, and I knew I knew that you were going to leave. You see? She knew it because of the way I acted. You understand? People are watching you. She was watching me, and she knew that there was a change in me to the point that I'm ready to go. And she, she knew when I was ready to go. And she also knew that I wasn't going to go to another uh, company she knew I was going to go in the ministry. You understand? Why? Because they're watching. They're watching. My sister was watching me after I got saved. That's what she said. I've been watching you. <laughs> and she, she told me this. She said, I've been watching you. And you're the only one that I know who walk according to a Christian the way a Christian is supposed to walk. I had no idea. You understand what I'm saying? People are watching you. Your family is watching you. The unsaved are watching you. So, you know, even if someone does something to you and you want to go, ooh, hit them over the head. <laughs> we, in ourselves, we have that self-control. You understand? Okay, I always think, what if I did that? That would not bring honor to my Lord. I can hit my husband over the head, but <laughs> you understand what I'm saying, okay? But you have to control yourself, amen? Self-control is very important. Okay, is that clear about walking in holiness? Because as servants of God, we have to. There's no other way. Amen? Amen? All right. Let's look at the next thing. In walking, excuse me, in the uh, servant's heart. Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Let's go to Proverbs ch chapter 20. Proverbs 20.
Okay. Verse 6. It says in verse 6, For men, most men, will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Hello. Amen. Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 10. Our example is the Lord, always. Amen? Hebrews chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 23. Look at God's faithfulness. It says here in verse 23, let us, let us hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering, for he is what? Faithful that promised. Amen? Also, 1 Corinthians 1.9. 1 Corinthians 1.9. Now, you are to be faithful also to do your homework. (laughs) 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 Ah, I got you. (laughs) In verse 9, it says, God is faithful by whom you were called unto the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. God is faithful. Okay. First uh, John 1, 9. Who can quote that to me? Shh. Raise your hand. Okay. Amen. We sin. We ask him to forgive. He forgives. He's faithful to forgive. Amen. And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. In verse 1, Wherefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, confession, Jesus Christ, who was what? Faithful to him that appointed him, as also Moses was faithful in all his house. Amen? Jesus was faithful. Look at 1 Timothy. 1st Timothy. Chapter 1, verse 12. And Paul says here, Now thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me, for that he counted me, what? Faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen? He was counted faithful, and was put in the ministry. When you go through the word of God, you see many of them who have been faithful, okay? Faithfulness is a fruit of the spirit. You already have it. It's in you. When you receive the, Lord, the Holy Spirit, it's in you, okay? It's a fruit of the spirit that you have to develop. You and I have to develop faithfulness. Yes? Okay? Galatians 5. Galatians 5. I'm getting there. Verse 22 and 23. Okay. It says, this is the New American Standard, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, 
joy, peace. You know, these things are in you. Did you know that? Okay. But we have to do what? Develop it. Okay. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, faithfulness. Against such things there is no law. Amen? You know, sometimes we're not patient with ourselves. Yes? Of course, you're very patient. You're such good people. Philippians 1, 6, being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good thing in you, he already did a good thing in us, amen? We'll perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. But we want it now, don't we? We want it now. Not to come now. So we have to what? Be patient with ourselves. Okay? God sees our heart. He knows that we're trying. He knows, I assume that you're in the Word, trying to apply the Word of God. Amen? And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Hello? We don't have to be so spiritual that it always works. No, it doesn't. Amen? So, But it's something that we have to apply. We have to apply the Word of God so that we can walk accordingly. Okay? In 1 Corinthians 4, verse, verse 1, my husband talked about stewardship. 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 1. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Okay? A steward is someone who, excuse me, who manages something whether it's apartment or what have you, or whatever is given to them. Amen? Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found what? Faithful. faithful. Amen? We have to be faithful in what God has given us. Whatever it is that God has given us, we have to be faithful. There are many things that God has entrusted to us. Okay? And as stewards of that, we are to be what? Faithful. Whatever it is that God has entrusted to you, we have to be faithful in it. Amen? Sometimes, you know, even the talents that God has given us, singing, playing, hello, amen? I don't have any of that. Praise God. I used to dance. I'm not talking about out in the bar or so. I'm talking about ballet. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's the only talent I have. Let's go on. But sometimes, you know, we're not faithful. The thing is out. Yeah, sometimes we are not faithful. Why? Because we feel we lack the ability to do what God wants us to do. Hello. Okay. And sometimes because of that, we're not faithful. But you see, it's not our ability. It's whose ability? It's God's ability. Second Corinthians chapter 3, in verse 4. And such trust have we through Christ, uh, through Christ to Godward, not that we sh are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Verse 6, who also has made us, what, able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. He has made us able ministers, okay? That's why it's very important that we don't look at ourselves. The devil will have you put your eyes on yourself, okay? And by doing that, he will bring out insecurities, inabilities, and what have you. You understand what I'm saying? Amen? No, it says here, the, he already has made us able ministers, 
Okay? It's God's ability, not ours. First Peter. First Peter. Chapter 4. Verse 11. If a man speaks, okay, let him speak as the oracles or utterance of God. Okay, if a man minister, let him do it as of the ability, underline that, of the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus, Jesus Christ, to whom be praised Dominion forever and ever. Note what it says, okay? When you speak, whether you teach, preach, prophesy, okay? Do it knowing that God puts his words in your mouth. Are you with me? When you minister, okay? Minister with the ability of God which God has given us to do. Whatever it is that God has given you to do, you already have the ability to do it. Amen? Amen. So that Jesus will be glorified. Okay? You know, sometimes people say, oh, you know, I can do this and that for the church. Hello? Hello? And they start, they don't finish. They're not faithful. Amen? We had someone. It was here, huh, in the States. And, oh, she just loved the ministry. She told my husband, I just love your ministry. I love to work in your ministry. Well, an opening was there in the office. Of course, my husband prayed. And God will always give you uh, a, a, a chance, if you will. You, you know what I'm saying? Okay? So, oh, she was so excited because she loved the ministry. So she started. Was it two weeks, honey? One week. One week, she didn't show up. After one week, she didn't show up. That was it. I love your ministry. <laughs> and then didn't show up after one week. Eh, what can we say? <laughs> yeah, be faithful in what God calls you to do. Even the little bitty things, whatever it is. Okay? And sometimes we, we don't think it's important to man the little bitty things that we do but it's important to God when God wants you to do it it is important to him Amen. are you with me yes. amen and <laughs> don't be like that lady don't go to pastor John oh I love your ministry pastor John please let me work in your ministry and then don't show up after one week <laughs> Don't do that. Amen? Matthew chapter 25. Verse 21. See, this is what you want to happen. The Lord said unto him, Well done, you good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things, enter you into the joy of the Lord. Amen? You've been faithful over a few little things. God sees that. When you do things as unto the Lord, hear me out. Okay? When you do things as unto the Lord, no matter how small it is, but you do it as unto him, God sees him. And God will promote you in the ministry. He is to, you don't have to promote yourself. He will promote you in the ministry. Amen? And it's very important. 
And it says, you have been faithful over a few things. I'll make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Amen? So be faithful. Be faithful, number one, in the ministry. Whatever ministry God has called you into. Okay? Hallelujah. God gives you whatever God gives you to do. Okay? Whatever God has called you to do. Be faithful in it. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5.17 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's what? A new creation. All things have passed away. All things have become new. Amen? Oh, thank you, Jesus. Ouch. You're a new creation in Christ now. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and given to us the ministry, the ministry the ministry of reconciliation. Is that just for the, those who are called in the ministry? No, that's for each and every one belief of the believers. Amen? This is for the believers, not just those who are called in the ministry. To it that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us what? The word of reconciliation. And then verse 20. This is a high calling. I don't know whether you know it or not. Amen. Now then, we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Amen? As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ that be a reconciled to God. We are ambassadors for Christ. And that's why we have to behave like ambassadors for Christ. Amen? And then it says, we has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen? So this is a calling that each and every one of us have, whether we're called in the ministry or not. Okay? Because many times people say, oh, you know, that's not for me because I'm not called in the ministry. Uh-uh. That's us. Even Mark 16. Mark 16. Sometimes people say, I don't know what my ministry is. There is your ministry. But they want something else. In verse 15, Jesus said, Go ye. How many ye's are there? <laughs> Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believes not shall be damned. And then it says in verse 17, And these signs shall follow them, them that believe. In my name, you cast out devils, you speak with new tongues, you take up serpents. If they, you drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt you. You lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Okay? And it says here in verse 20, And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. When you do the word of God, this is our ministry. I'm not talking about those who are called in the ministry. You understand? Each and every believer, this is our ministry. When we do this, we can be confident of the fact that the Lord will be there working with them, working with us, with signs following, as we do the word. Amen? Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 8. Isaiah 6 verse 8. Also I heard the voice of, a, of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for, for us? 
Then said I, here am I, send me. How many of you are willing to say that? I'll send you to the Amazon jungle. Amen. Here am I. Maybe send me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I tell you, there are, there are so many bugs there. Because we were at the Amazon. It's a 16-hour boat ride. Not luxury. It only has this. My husband was sitting on a plank. You can put your hand there and... If they're piranhas, they will eat your hand. <laughs> There's no toilet. You have to find your spot in the bushes. <laughs> and so with our friends, we went there because Connie uh, spoke Spanish. We don't speak Spanish, not for ministry, you know. And so we had a crusade. And Jim was the first one who was going to preach, and he had a white shirt. And we were sitting there. And he was preaching, and I looked at his shirt. I said to myself, look at his shirt. This is a really a nice shirt that he has on. Look at the pattern. The <laughs> My husband, those are bugs. <laughs> it was full of bugs to the point it looked like a pattern. When we wanted to go to sleep, we had to remove the bugs from our bed. You still want to go to the Amazon? <laughs> we slept on the floor. You still want to go to the Amazon? <laughs> we had to, <laughs> when we had to take a bath. <laughs> That's funny. The men went first, stripped down to here, because there was a, like a, a pipe that came out of a, a little a hill or something, and so they would wash. So it was our turn. So they strip. We could just strip, you know, wash and all, at least halfway. And then we looked up, because it's on the hill. And as we looked up, there were people sitting there watching us. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. And a 16-hour boat ride in the heat. I mean, heat, heat. Okay? And then we got to the room and wanted to take a bath before the crusade. And guess what? There's no shower. It's just a, 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 a drum, okay, with water. And it was black. <laughs> and it had toilet paper in it. <laughs> See, we didn't take a bath. <laughs> and then we went to, <laughs> I think after we came back, we could take a, a bath in our friend's bathroom. But hallelujah. Amen. But God is faithful. I really enjoyed it. I really did. All right. Romans 10. Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. I have to stop shortly, hey? Romans 10, verse 9. That if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto sal salvation. Amen? Amen? Verse 12, for the scripture said, Whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Verse 13, for whosoever ca shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen? Amen. Verse 14, how then? Shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? 
as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Amen? Amen. So God wants to be faithful in the things that he's called us to do, even the little things. I'm not quite finished, but I'll do to, uh, not tomorrow, next time, okay? But this is our ministry as believers. Many times people don't know what the uh, ministry is, but this is our ministry. But we have to be faithful in doing this. The ministry that we just read, amen? Hello. We have to be faithful in that. Because while we're faithful in that, then God will promote us and put us in the ministry. If that's what he wants to do. Whatever it is that he has for you. You understand what I'm saying? But this is where it starts. And we have to be faithful with it. If we're not faithful, what can I say? Okay? So, I have to stop right now. We shall continue when we continue. Whenever that is. Amen? This is